This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Recently, my wife and I were able to visit again the Yellowstone National Park. Now, we had been there several years ago, but this time we entered the park with a little bit of a mixed feeling because we had read a lot about these reports according to which the Yellowstone National Park might blow up pretty soon. And there is, of course, a distinct possibility that this might happen, as I will explain to you later in the program, also based on what the Bible has to say. But when we entered the park, we were again struck by the breathtaking beauty of the environment, the waterfalls, the upper, the lower falls, also the waterfalls at Kepler Cascades. Now, of course, we couldn't see all the waterfalls. There are quite a few in Yellowstone National Park, but seeing the mountains, seeing the waterfalls, seeing the canyons, we were again reminded of the great creator God who created it all with unlimited powers and with a beautiful sense of showing mankind how this planet could look like if we would not pollute it all the time. But we also did look at many of the geysers or geysers for our British audience. And of course, there are again too many to mention, too many to see. But we did look at the red sponder. We looked at the volcanic tableland. We looked at the spasm geyser. And of course, all these geysers are extremely hot. They are boiling. The water there is boiling. You can't even get very near to them. We saw the wall pool. We saw another interesting one, which is called Sapphire Pool. It has crystal clear blue water. And it is a deceiving one because it is so inviting for you to wanting to jump in. But of course, you wouldn't want to do that because, again, very hot water. We did see the fountain paint pot, which, of course, melt awfully. And all of you who have been there will remember that smell, I believe, for the rest of your lives. And then we saw the sulfur cauldron, and that was an interesting one, too, because they tell us that the sulfur cauldron has acid in it, which is 10 times as high than lemon juice. And they also tell us that this sulfur cauldron sits at the edge of one of the most active volcanoes. Now, we, of course, did see the Old Faithful. And we were just there when the Old Faithful erupted, which was quite a spectacular sight. Now, they tell us in their reports from the Yellowstone National Park that since 2000, its intervals have varied from 44 to 125 minutes, with an average of about 90 to 92 minutes. Its duration is one and a half to five minutes, and its height is 90 to 184 feet. The rangers say that 90% of their predictions are within plus minus 10 minutes. It has, been in, as ha, it has been erupting in nearly the same fashion throughout the recorded history of Yellowstone, but here's the interesting thing. It is not possible to predict more than one eruption in advance. You can only predict one eruption after the previous eruption has ended. And it says here that short eruptions lead to an interval of just over an hour, and long eruptions lead to an interval of about one and a half hours. And actually, when we were there, it was a pretty long eruption. And so then, when it was over, they told us that the next eruption would take place within two hours. And I asked the ranger how they can be so sure, because they have been pretty accurate when it came to the, and when it comes to the Old Faithful. And they said, well, it has to do also with the measurements of the heat and also of the pressure in the air once the eruption has taken place. So they can apparently measure that out that way. But you know, Old Faithful is the only one where they can do it. There are many geysers in the national park, and they cannot really prognosticate when they will erupt. And that reminded me, of course, of the warning when Christ told us that nobody can predict when he comes back, at least not the day and the hour. And of course, it also talks about the seasons. Only God the Father knows, not even the angels in heaven know, not even Jesus Christ knows. So people always try to predict when something will happen, especially when Christ comes back. 
and they can't do it. We also went to Mammoth and we saw the devil's thumb there. And of course, that also reminded me a little bit of the fact that this isn't God's world yet. See, it is still Satan who rules this earth. But we had been looking for animals all along and we couldn't really find that many. And of course, that brought back the reports that the animals are slowly walking away. Now at Mammoth, we did find some animals. They are always there, it seems, uh, almost like domesticated. But these were, of course, not the buffaloes we were looking for. These were uh, other, like deer, but the buffaloes, we saw a few, but not as many at all as we used to see them. And of course, again, this brought me back thinking of those reports. And there are quite a few reports about the possibility that Yellowstone may erupt soon. Here's an article by Wyoming Public Media saying that millions of people visit Yellowstone each year to see its geysers, hot springs, and mud pots. The park sits on top of the world's largest active, notice this active volcano, called the Super Volcano. How impressive is it? One ancient eruption killed rhinos in what is now Nebraska. And these giant eruptions in Yellowstone, this article says, super volcanoes, if you wish, probably last many, many months, maybe even years. The magma is much larger than they had originally believed. Before, we thought it was 20 kilometers long. We discovered just this year that it's two and a half times bigger, 2.5 times. It's 90 kilometers long. And the interesting thing is, which we should always remember, that the Teton Fault Movement could trigger the Yellowstone Volcano. In other words, it can be triggered through earthquakes. Now, people are telling us, oh, well, that's not going to happen for a long, long time, but they can predict it. See, they can't predict when earthquakes strike either. They can't even predict, as recently happened, when a meteorite strikes the Earth. They are dumbfounded when it happens. Here's an article by the weather.com organization, Yellowstone supervolcano eruption would doom the United States. And this article says that a major eruption at Yellowstone supervolcano would send a plume of ash with a volume roughly 850 times greater than that of the one observed during the eruption of Mount St. Helens into the atmosphere. And it says an eruption of the magnitude of Yellowstones would ash miles above Earth, or would shoot ash miles above Earth, well into the stratosphere, avoiding the jet stream and creating an umbrella of ash that would blanket the United States in a widespread but relatively even pattern. And another article, which was just published on September 2 by Time magazine, tells us that, for instance, the Rocky Mountains would be covered with several meters of ash. And it says that San Francisco and Seattle would get a heaping two inches, but Montana would have to dig out from a 70-inch pileup. And of course, then they go on to tell us that, well, they are pretty confident that it's not going to happen anytime soon. However, that is highly disputable. Here's an article by the riot.org which points out that scientists just don't know. It says that though scientists are mixed as to whether the place would blow anytime soon, there is one thing they do agree on. If it did, it would push much of Earth to the verge of extinction. Its immediate effects would be deadly enough, with some estimates saying that 87,000 people would be killed instantly, and a 10-foot layer of ash would spread up to thousand miles away, leaving two thirds of the country completely uninhabitable. The spread of volcanic ash, they say, rocks and gas would immediately cease any sort of air transportation in much of the world. An explosion of volcanic winter magnitude, however, doesn't seem likely according to the US Geological Survey. But then the article says, of course, other scientists are a bit more skeptical. These explosions are highly unpredictable. The Huffington Post said it most accurately, and then this article quotes them saying, the bulging pocket of magma swishing around beneath Old Faithful might never blow its lid again, or it might put on a surprise fireworks show next Independence Day. Scientists just do not know. 
And that's a key. They don't know. They can predict it. They cannot tell you whether it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. They say it's pretty sure that it's going to happen one of these days, like the big one will strike Los Angeles, San Francisco one of these days, but they don't know when. But the Bible warns us, my friends, the Bible warns us. When you look at some of the prophecies, like in the book of Leviticus chapter 26, in verse 31, God says, I will lay your cities waste and bring your sanctuary to desolation. I will not smell the fragrance of your sweet aromas. I will bring the land to desolation. And if you want to know and prove to yourself that these prophecies actually do refer to the United States of America, then please ask for our free booklet on the Great Tribulation and the Day of the Lord. That booklet will explain to you what these scriptures mean, how they apply to us today. Here's a passage in the book of Ezekiel, in the sixth chapter, in verse 6, where God says, In all your dwelling places the cities shall be laid waste. In Isaiah, in chapter 6 and verse 9, he said, Go and tell this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, their ears heavy. Shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitant, the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate. The Lord has removed men far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. There are many more scriptures I could give you talking about wasted land, wasted cities. In Isaiah chapter 9 and in verse 19, quoting from the authorized version, we read that through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is a land darkened, and the people shall be as a fuel of the fire. And then in the book of Zephaniah, in the first chapter, beginning in verse 14, we read about again how dark it is going to be. And you think of those ashes when the supervolcano explodes. Why is that? Well, here in Zephaniah chapter 1 and in verse 17 we read, I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. They have sinned against the Lord. And Isaiah chapter 8, in conclusion, in verse 20 it says to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they will pass through it hard-pressed and hungry, and it shall happen when they are hungry, they shall be enraged and curse their king and their God and look upward, and then they will look to the earth and see trouble and darkness, gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness, spiritually, but also apparently quite physically. So it appears that these kind of volcanoes, and not only in the Yellowstone National Park will erupt with earthquakes, with other heavenly signs, at the same time when a world war is plaguing this earth. All these things are prophesied. Our free booklet, Great Tribulation and Day of the Lord, will tell you more about it. So thanks very much for listening. This is Norbert Lang for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.